Welcome to Hammer and Nails with Skip and Allison Bedell. Happy Friday, everybody. Hey, everybody, I'm Skip Bedell. And you just missed his awesome fart, and I'm Allison Bedell. <laughs> no, no, they didn't. There was nothing <laughs> awesome about it. It was really actually quite ordinary. Yeah. Well, you're What's happening, news. y'all? Welcome back. Here we are doing our thing and excited to be uh, coming up on the holiday weekend, right? Labor Day is here. Mm-hmm. Barbecues, my favorite thing, right? We yeah, get but there's a big eat. hurricane coming up the East Coast that might have uh, a lot of parties ruined. Oh, man. I know. Sunday, right? They're yeah, it's about? supposed to be Sunday and Monday. It's supposed to wreak a lot of havoc. Wow. Havoc? Yeah. Wow, like shenanigans and... Yes. Really? Yeah. Wow. All right, then. There you go. Yeah. So that's going to be... So barbecues tomorrow and umbrellas on Sunday, right? on our weekend. I don't know. I don't know if you know if it's going to reach, you know, like be... It's not going to be like a hurricane up here. Epic proportions. Right, but it's supposed to be... Hurricane force, gale winds. Right. But everybody else in the rest of the country, I'm sure, is going to have an awesome weekend. All that stuff going on. Yeah, I love three-day weekends. Yeah. So Absolutely. It's the best, off. right? Tomorrow morning, which is Saturday, the 3rd of September, um, 9.20 a.m., you're going to be on Fox and Friends. Oh, right. It's your first time being on the weekend edition. Yeah. You know, they. Um, I guess they like what I'm doing over there. And they're like, hey, man, can you no, come? They always like. Can you come on the weekend? No. Well, yeah, they always... They always like it, and they always ask me to come back, which is great. It's just having the time to do it, and I'm, you know, I, I love hanging out with those guys. They're always fun to, to bring cool stuff over mm-hmm. to. But yeah, you're right. This is the first one on the weekend, so yeah, you know what? It's a I different crew. I've never worked yeah, with these people. I was just gonna say that. I don't even know who the hosts are. Yeah, and they probably don't know who we are. No, they're gonna be like, "Who the hell are you? <laughs> and what's with this giant refrigerator you brought here?" Yeah, tomorrow you are gonna be talking about this awesome new high tech. Now you and I saw this thing in, in a store, an appliance store. About a month or two ago, probably more like two months ago, it's been out not very long, but it's the highest in tech in the high tech. Like it's, yeah. it's it's got a it's a tablet that is literally part of the door. The whole front door on this thing has like a twenty one inch full color tablet touch screen. It's just like super super high tech, and you can do everything with it that you can do with a tablet. And it's really right. exciting. You yeah, can, it's got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. You can hook into uh, all your internet stuff. And you can actually even mirror what you're watching on your TV to that screen. So while you're in the kitchen eating or whatever, you you know you don't want to miss, like, miss the game or whatever. You're like, oh, man, it's right there on the TV. Yeah, like if you're cooking and you don't want to – yeah, you don't have a TV in the kitchen. It's got – yeah, now you do. some really cool features. I mean like um, – It's a, What did we say? It's a Samsung. Yeah, it's, it's a Samsung. It's called the Samsung Family Hub. You guys can check it out. We'll be putting a link to it on our site, of course, as always. HammerNailsPodcast.com. I still get people that listen to our podcast and say to me, I want to go to your website, HammerNails.com, but I couldn't find blah, blah, uh, or they, they – they, they don't know what the website address is. Yeah, but when, is. <laughs> when, uh, doesn't it like come up like, isn't there like an, like an autocorrect, you know, when you hammernails.com, does it come up hammernailspodcast.com? No, so there's com? something else's hammer, I mean, it's somebody else's website, but ours is hammernails It's like some porn, some porn host site Yeah, somebody or something. getting hammered and, uh, yeah, and somebody nailed. getting nailed. Yeah, <laughs> right. but... If, <laughs> but ours is hammernailspodcast.com. Yeah. And you know what? Even if you don't remember what the right one is, just type in Skip Bedell Podcast and it'll come up in Google anyway. Just put in skipbedell.com. That's always easy to remember. There's oh, like, fuck yeah. It's the same there, exact there's, website. There's like 20,000 different ways to get to this website. Yeah, right? it's, so, you can do alisonbedell.com, skipbedell.com, yeah, skipandalisonbedell.com, hammernailspodcast.com. Yeah. All you that. know, I also purchased um, wearethebedells.com. Oh, God, really? Yeah, I didn't. How, yeah, how many, what do they call it? Is it a uh, domain name? How yeah. many domain names do we have? Like, like a lot. Seven. And they all point back to that site, right? Yeah, because before we eat, before like we were even on TV, I was trying to anticipate what, you know, because how people are, they try to buy up your name as soon as you're on TV yeah. or something, you know, and I didn't want to give yep. anybody the chance to fuck with us and... And, you so know, she's brought up like every name. Yeah, because everything you, has to do with like uh, our names. Yeah, because you know the boys love you, so you know before you know it, you you know if I didn't buy up Skipadel dot com, that was going to be like a number one boy porn site. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks for that. Th- thanks for filling me in on that. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let me get back to this refrigerator, all right? This thing is super high tech, super awesome. Um, you can actually even, you know, the, one of the other features in it we cameras. forgot about, it's got cameras, it's got three high def color cameras. And in- it takes a picture. Every time you shut the door, it takes a picture of the contents of what's inside of your refrigerator. Right. So, which seems like completely unnecessary. Why do you need to have a picture of what's in your refrigerator? But here's what's cool about it. You hook into it with the app on your phone, so now you can communicate with this thing when you're away from home. And you could be at work, you could be in the car on the way home, whatever. You pull up the cameras in the refrigerator, you take a peek inside. It's just like being there. Say, oh man, yeah. I need milk, I need eggs, I need whatever it is, oh, right? Oh shit, Skip finished all the goddamn grapes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep. I finish all the everything. He finishes everything, yeah. and then he doesn't tell me he finished it. And then I'm craving that item, and I go to get some, and there's absolutely yeah. But nothing. the best is I put the empty container back in there. I love that. So you'd be like, oh man, yeah, there's still some yeah. rice pudding or whatever it is, and you yeah. pick it up. You're like, ah. Oh. Yeah, you do that, and you also leave, you love to leave your empty yogurt containers on the counter. Yes. For some reason, you do not throw them away. Sometimes, not no, always, but no. All right, can we can we just keep talking about the refrigerator, not my bad habits? <laughs> okay, so then you don't want me to bring up any of yours. Trust me. I don't have any bad yeah, habits. Right. So then, after you see what is inside of your refrigerator, you can write from the tablet on the refrigerator or from your, the app that you connect to it. You can order your groceries. Well, you do your grocery list right there. Yeah. So you pull it up either on your smartphone or right on the face of this. Uh, you, yeah, you make a list on the face of yeah, and you can basically pull up a grocery list. I think it's keyed into um, Fresh to Go and ShopRite and a couple other places. Well, okay, now that that's a different thing. The grocery list is one thing, and actually purchasing the groceries is another. Right, but you can actually so, go. They they do a have a feature. yeah. They do have a couple of grocery stores that are actually like you know. Yeah, like, I don't know what they because uh, I know like a Peapot also does that. Yeah, yeah. Basically, you but, can key into any one of those websites that have to do with like delivery companies or grocery places and get a full list. So it's actually really cool. You can do your whole grocery list right on the face of the refrigerator and purchase it, everything right there place an order yeah. and go and pick it up or Pay have it delivered it. and then you know, you know the delivery services and all that but yeah. now this is another thing that I wanted to bring up about that um, now we, I, I'm sure you've, you've heard you've seen the Peapod trucks driving around Right. You know, yeah. Sure. So you know what that is, right? Yeah. It's where they you can place an order, grocery delivery. Right, and they deliver it to yeah. you. And our friend Tara uses it, and she loves it. It saves you a lot of time from having to go to the store and get right. your stuff. You know, if you already know what you're going to need, and they bring it to you, it's very convenient. And just like I love my Amazon, would you forget to turn your ringer off again? Oh uh, yeah. Super. Um, just because you always yell at me for that. Yeah. Um. Well, it's usually you. And I love me some Amazon, as y'all know. So I do a lot of my shopping from there. And dry goods, um, depending on what it is, I'll get it from there. Not canned, really. But I do a lot of my shopping online, most of my shopping. And a lot of food items I exclusively get in the grocery store. Now, this is my beef. Ah, this is my beef. My beef. Um, if you're going to order fresh food from these delivery services. Yeah. And you're going to place an order for meat, vegetables, um, fruit. Anything. Anything. No, but what I'm talking about is fresh food. Okay. Okay. Um, this is my, my problem. What's the beef? My beef with the beef is... Where's your beef? <laughs> okay, now think <laughs> about it. Is. Think about what you... <laughs> your sausage. Yeah. Think about what you go through when you go grocery shopping and you know, okay, I want to get some skirt steaks, all right? So you walk over to the skirts and you're looking at all the different steaks and you're looking for one that's maybe like got some fat on it because you like to have fat on your steak or you're looking for something that's particularly lean or you're looking for a small one or you're looking for a large one in the package. Okay, so there's things that you look for. Or if you're walking over to the apples or the peaches, right? I squeeze, not you know, but I feel the fruit before I purchase it because that's a way to determine if it's ripe or not. All that stuff. All of it, right? So there's there's a selection process in picking out fresh food as opposed to things that are in boxes or cans or jars right. or, you know, like a package of bread. So so what are you, what are you getting at? What I'm getting at Get is... Get to the point already. I don't feel comfortable about ordering those foods through these services, and, and my reason was recently justified. Uh. I was interviewing somebody who works for Peapod, right. and I asked this person, how do you make a selection... On the, the the food that you're going to pick, 
And he says, we get a list. It's got all the SKU numbers. It tells us what to get. So you just go down the list and you get what's on the list. I said, no, but how do you pick? So this idiot's like, yeah, it's right here on the list. <laughs> you know, like, no. How do you choose which one? So now if somebody says they want six apples and you've got a huge display full of apples and you walk over to the apples, right. how do you choose which apple you're going to select. He's going to pick the first six that he sees and throw them in the bag. That's exactly what he said. He's yeah. like, and then he, and like it took him a second. He thought about it and he's like, oh, no, 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 no. I, 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 no, no. I, I, I see where you're going with that. No, I just pick whatever's on top. Right. Now, I have a problem with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if I'm going to purchase food, I don't want gotcha. the, somebody else's right. so non-selection maybe, yeah. selections. So the thing that we're talking about with this particular refrigerator, I mean, you don't have to order everything on there, but you can certainly, I mean, if you want to go and pick out your produce and stuff like that right. or you know, whatever uh, well, no, fresh. I, I, but I mean, how awesome is it to have like, wow, you just like love banging everything on the table today, I don't you? I know. Wow. My point is, and I'm not speaking specifically to whatever services are available through this refrigerator. I'm just speaking in general about this type of food delivery service because now Amazon even has something called Amazon Fresh. Right. You can order fresh food now from Amazon as well. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. It's supposed to be good. But in the same light, I don't feel comfortable getting it from them either because I don't know who or how a selection is made. Right. You know, like I want, there's, you know, 600 peaches there. Maybe only a few of them are actually right. Well, then you need to get your lazy ass up off the couch, get in the car and go to the store. This is for people who don't want to do that. I know. (laughs) This is for someone who wants to look at their phone and like press, send me an apple. I know. (laughs) You're, you're, yeah, okay, you're just. Yeah, I get it. I get what you're saying. I get it. Point made. I get it. So, you know, maybe not for everything you're going to order through these services, but it is like... Do you have a thi- to oppose everything that I say? It is a thing that's coming up that people are doing now, right? So they're ordering... I know, but this is something that I'm sure some people don't haven't thought about. Right. And I'm, and I'm just telling you, I spoke to somebody who actually does this, and, and, and if for all these other services that are doing it now, Jet, Amazon, you don't know what their, what their practice is, the, how they select the food that you're purchasing. Right. And for all you know, you know, you got somebody, you know, picking their nose and then pulling up your head of lettuce and putting it in the box and... And yeah, you know, I want to be. If it's going to be a booger on my on my lettuce, I want it to be my booger. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you know? I wasn't even thinking about so that. So I, uh, I, I love the idea of but, making but this. Thanks purchase. for grossing me out. Now, all right. <laughs> I love the idea of using this service to order the food if it's things that are not fresh selections. Right. All right. So speaking of fresh in this refrigerator, yeah, there is like you can drag uh, on the screen on the tablet. To the picture of what's inside of your refrigerator, you can drag how what when it expires. That is a cool feature. Yeah. yeah. So actually, every time you close the door, it takes a picture of what's inside, and then you can touch the screen on a little feature on the front that says "Show me what's inside," and then it, it actually shows you a a live picture of the contents of the refrigerator, and then you can touch those things and uh, put a date on it. Right. Right. So like you know, this is good for three more days, or this one is whatever. So. Like, you know, the milk and the eggs and whatever, the cheese and whatever goes bad, like fruits or whatever. Um, that's a pretty high-tech feature as well. Yeah. Right? You can actually date your food. I mean, that's for people who are really, like, if you, you really, know, on top yeah. of, you know, you want to be, like, fanatical I about I use the sniff test. Yeah, I just, I just, I, I look for mold <laughs> if there's not any evidence of anything we growing. We have had those potato rolls in here for about three weeks. Did you ever bring them to work with you? No. Oh, man. No. Yeah, I thought that would be good for the person stealing your lunch. I know. Throw yeah, those. They I keep, know. like, t- taking your uh, <laughs> your whole grain bread when you bring it in there. Taking those three-week-old potato rolls. Those things they don't They were still soft. Yeah, they don't and get. they had no mold. They don't get moldy, but, I mean, you know they've got to be, like, you know. They were on. still soft. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Like, it just, it, I don't know. They had some uh, stealth. I can't imagine like, there being preservatives in these. <laughs> it was like a bioweapon, like, built into that thing, right? Like, yeah. you couldn't see the, the, uh, the fungus on it or something. Yeah. But, yeah, anyway. Yeah, so this refrigerator is very, very cool. i got a couple of really cool items I'm going to be talking about tomorrow that are on sale at the depot. Of course, everything Labor Day weekend. If you're looking to get stuff for your house right now, I mean, really just about anything, but especially appliances, bathroom oh, stuff. I found the coolest bathroom thing stuff. last night. We Now's were, the time. We were searching for stuff for our the, the new bathroom because I was dissatisfied with um, some of the selections that I had made with regards to tile or paint. So I found the coolest thing ever. I really am in love with this tile. It is made by, it's a company that is 
a subsidiary of Facade who makes those uh, stamped tiles that we put in our ceiling. Right. Yeah, those things are awesome. And this company, you had actually uh, demonstrated one of their products on one of your morning segments. It was these, um, so they have a sticky back, self-stick tiles, and you had demonstrated with, they were they were like metal looking. Yeah, there was a stainless steel one that I was doing right. on a kitchen backsplash. Right. That was on another uh, stick them Fox right up. Morning Show. And those things are amazing as well. Because yeah, no glue, no grout, and they no stick. nothing. So you just like stick it on so, the wall. It's total DIY. I mean, anybody can yes. really do it. And we found by the facade tiles in the same display, they have new self-stick tiles now that are not metal, but they are, what are they? They look like granite, like rock. They're, they're And they yeah, are real Yeah, there's some like actual, like a pe- this actual, like a... Gr- slices yeah. of this amazing rock. And and it's like, they're just beautiful. And it looks like, like when you're driving down through the mountains and you see that big wall of rock on the side of the road, you know? And, and, and that's what it would look like on your wall. It's just this big, beautiful... It's sparkly, you know, like the natural sparkle that you see inside of the rocks. And it was amazing. And so I'm trying to find a place to incorporate that into our kitchen. Oh, my God. Our, speaking of our kitchen, we just got – you just put in the microwave today. Now, this just isn't any microwave. This is not – are you doing the microwave tomorrow? Oh, no. No. Ah. no. No. It's by Sharp. It's a drawer microwave. What is a drawer microwave, you ask? I ask the same thing. It's the coolest microwave ever. It is. It goes below your countertop, and instead well, it's of built into a cabinet, so I mean, yeah. you, you know, you need you need to build it, either modify your cabinetry or, or get a, a cabinet that's made, you know, to the house this thing. Yeah, that, it's, like, right. it's, it's like any other built-in, like kind of a custom appliance. Yeah, but some people actually have a, a regular microwave in that built-in hole underneath their countertop. Right, like you and, have a built-in wall oven, same type yeah. of thing. It's only it's a microwave. Right, so a lot of, and we've seen these microwaves before. A lot of people have them below the countertop because they don't want to use it in the range space or they don't want to leave it on the countertop, so they'll put it below the counter. Well, that's part. just basically a shelf that they put a regular countertop microwave down below the countertop. But right. what I don't like about those, you got to bend, bend over. Bend down to open up yeah, the door. Yeah, you got to bend down and, and you got to see you gotta, controls. everything, right? This one opens up. You press a button on the top and it the drawer opens up and you you load it from the top. You put your items into this drawer from the top of it. So instead of pulling open a door and inserting it into the side, you are inserting it down into the top. And then you press another button and it closes the drawer and it's just the coolest thing ever. So you don't have to bend over because our old asses do not want to bend if we don't have to. Yeah, well... I mean, you know, mine's not quite as old as yours, but it it is pretty, yeah, it's pretty yeah. banged up. Oh, my God, more exciting news. I keep forgetting to say this, so I put it in bold and large letters on my notepad here. We are finally on iHeartRadio. Oh, yeah, that's right. I heard about that. I heard yes. you talking about that the other day. Very yeah. cool. Yes. So um, I'm going to put a link on the uh, the website and on my uh, my Facebook, but you can just go on to iHeartRadio. They have a tab on there for podcasts. And look, you can search. You can just type in. Also, if you want to just do a search of Hammer Nails podcast, just type in coolest podcast ever, and then we'll just <laughs> pop up. Yeah. And we'll just come up. Well, I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> excited about that. Yeah. So, yeah, we're finally on iHeartRadio. Finally. And um, we were also, what, what else were we on that somebody else told me to do? Um, we're on YouTube now. Yeah, we changed all that over. Yeah, you can actually yeah. listen to all the episodes. The whole catalog yeah. is on YouTube as well. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, there's nothing visual there to see except our little cartoon thing, our little, right, little thing. Animation. Oh, speaking of which, little cartoon thing, which reminds me of the magnets that I found, which is what held up, first of all, the mailing of the pictures that people asked us to sign and send them. So I did it. I had everything in the envelopes. The magnet, the picture, we signed it, I sealed it, I addressed it, return a, return address. Skip, can you bring these to the post office for me today? There's six of them. Sure. Now it's about three days later. Skip, did you ever go to the post office? I've been really busy. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, so uh, actually, they did make it from the desk to my truck. Mm -hmm. So that's that. I mean, like that's a major accomplishment. Mm -hmm. So and then when I asked you this morning, you, and you said, "Okay, I'll go to the post office and do that." Yeah, because did you do it today? No, because they're actually in my truck, but um, I did not get to the truck today mm -hmm. because I was installing. Uh, right. Uh, forced air heating units and electric drawer microwave units and every other kind of unit. I installed right. another unit today, too. That was fun also. After I installed those <laughs> other units. <laughs> right in the, right in the yeah. middle of the patio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I installed my favorite unit. <laughs> <laughs> We've never actually done it right there before. Yeah, well, now we did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, smack dab right in the middle of the patio. Right in the middle of the old patio. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Right out now. But yet it was underneath the overhang part where you where you built the trellis thing. Right. So therefore, satellites couldn't see us. Oh, I wasn't even thinking that. It oh. was kind of just kind of like spur of the moment thing. Yeah, like I wasn't thinking about it until afterwards yeah. when I was like looking at it. Spontaneity is important, yeah. I think, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that was, I mean, you don't get any more spontaneous than that. Yeah. Like you were basically walking up the stairs back in the house and I said, nope. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Come here for a second. I need yeah. to show you something. <laughs> yeah, I prefer it like that. I can't stand planning. Yeah. No, we never plan. Yeah. It's got to just happen. Yeah. Right? When the moment's right. Yeah, that no, was a good idea. For me, the moment's right about every 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that Cialis commercial. <laughs> yeah. For when the moment's right. Oh, my God. Speaking of a commercial. Speaking of a commercial, I just saw the best commercial, and it, I think somebody was in my head and then made this downy fabric softener commercial. I had to actually write it down exactly what it said because it is this is a commercial about me. Oh. It's a downy fabric softener commercial and there's three little separate so scenes sexy in it. Chick in the beginning of it? The first one is a woman who is looking at herself in a mirror wearing a pretty dress and she says to her dress, I love you so much. That's why I bought six of you for when you stretch <laughs> out. <laughs> And then that's totally you. yeah. And then there's this guy with a beautiful uh, shirt in his drawer, and he a button down shirt, and he says, "I want you to stay this bright blue forever. That's why you'll stay in this drawer forever." That's also you. <laughs> you not only do you buy every one of the dresses that you like, if there's eight of them in the store, you'll yeah. buy all of them and then put them in the closet, but you'll never wear right, any of because them because I don't want to ruin them. Yeah, you want to save it. Right, but then right. by the time you actually decide you want to try one of them on, it's been like eaten by moths or some shit. Right, or it doesn't <laughs> it's been fit in the anymore. Closet for three it's out of years. style. Yeah, yeah. And then the third part of and the that's commercial. That's why we bring like really nice, expensive clothes still with the tags on them to the thrift, thrift store. store. Yeah, yeah, and drop them off to like the charity. Uh, uh, oh, I got something to say about that bin. too. Yeah. Well, the third part of this commercial is another person saying, "I can't live without you, and that's why I'll never ever wash you." Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not good. But there are some things that like you just I mean think about some fancy clothes that you might have yeah. that you literally cannot wash. Like for example, right. those amazing $1200 um what are they Versace jeans that you that I got for you some that you wore crazy, at the last guys yeah. choice awards. Yeah. I wore you would them, never put those in a washing machine. I I wore them once. Right, yeah. but you can wear them ten times and sweat your balls off in them, and I will never put them in the washing machine. <laughs> no, you can't wash them. No, you, you cannot wash them. Dry clean them or something. I don't, I don't but even. You know what? Dry cleaning I don't even does know. nothing. I, I never owned anything like that before. I wear like work pants with I holes know, in them, but, but, and like work boots with like you know the the steel toe ripping through the front. I know, but you know, dry cleaning doesn't do anything. I don't know what they do. They pour some chemical over it. I don't know. But I mean, I used to work at a job in the in the nineties where I used to wear a blazer to work every day, and I was buying nice. I was going to Ann Taylor buying nice silk blazers you know right. they had they were lined and back in the day you know i had some i had some like stinky pit issues and i would bring them my jackets to the dry cleaners and the the jacket would look cleaner but the pit smelled this fucking same yeah back in the day uh back in the, back in the day i don't i don't know you know like right out of school one, my first job out of school was like you know a suit and tie type of thing um, and I wore suits and shirts and all that stuff every day. And I found the same thing. Like, you know, you need to dry clean those things. So that was like kind of a lesson in dry cleaning for me. Cause you know, you drop off every week, all your mm -hmm. clothes and stuff. And it's like, they just take on this funky smell. They have like this chemical dry cleaned smell. But that, but, but, but it does not remove your body smell. Yeah. If you have, you know, like if you sweated up a shirt or like sweated something up real bad, it's not necessarily gonna. It doesn't clean it out. Yeah. 
I mean, it, it'll clean it like the like if it have any like stains, stains or but, whatever. But it, yeah, it's still but your stink sm- remains. Yeah, your yeah. funk is on there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really disgusting. Yeah, yeah. So they, it's I, funky. It is, and like, what do you do? How do you you can't like you throw you it to, out and you get another shirt? Right, you have to like really limit <laughs> That's what I did. how much you wear these things. <laughs> yeah, and try not to like let it go out of well, style. Well, that's why you need to have like a lot of, of, of the same yeah, thing. If, yeah. If you wear like work attire <laughs> like that, like dress clothes, you need to have a pretty big selection because yeah. if you wear it every day, yeah, you know, you need to have enough to where you can rotate, you know, for a few weeks without wearing the same thing. Or else you start. First of all, you, you look like you're wearing the same thing all the time. It's like yeah. a Tuesday outfit, a Thursday outfit. You know, you don't want to get into that routine. Well, I, you know what I do. You don't though? want to be predictable. Well, you know what, my pants, my yeah. pants. Um, I wear this. I I wear the same pair of pants for one week at work. Uh, yeah, but you're you're like doing the. You know, you got your be- gun belt on. Right, all that because stuff. I, not, I don't want to. You know, wearing a pain any in high the ass. fashion stuff to your job now. Right. No. So I put like the gun belt on my pants. And I don't take it off. I leave, I just take off the pants with the gun belt hanging on it, and I hang that up. I take the gun out and secure that. But right. the gun belt, I leave on the pants. Right. And I wear the same pair of pants for a week, and then the next week I wear another pair of pants. I change my shirt every day, and of right. course, and underwear and socks. I was hoping you change your underwear. That, the, the pants. Yeah, that could well, be I mean, if they look clean, if they don't have anything. No, oh, don't say that. <laughs> 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 you do the old sniff test. Yeah, hey, these, these smell all right. <laughs> I do the visual test. Get another day out of these. <laughs> you know what? And plus, because with work, I don't really give a shit what I look like as far as, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, I, you're, like, I mean your job. A pair of cargo work. pants is a pair of cargo pants. I don't that, give a shit if it's green, black, or blue. that's you guys wear, right? I mean, it's yeah. like you're wearing cargo pants and like a yeah. work It's like a, yeah, like a the, uniform without having a uniform. Right. You're, yeah. uh, you're plain clothes, but it's kind of uniformish right. clothes. Right. 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 It's like if you walk into a Target, they're all wearing khakis and a red shirt, right? It's like right. plain clothes, but right. still kind of like, yeah. You know, yeah. But yeah. You know, you always get some people that don't really adhere to the, the you know, what you were supposed to wear. Um, right. Um, so I figure if other people at, at my job can wear flip-flops and capris, uh. I can wear the same pair of cargo pants right. for the whole week. Well, I wear, you know, work pants and boots and, uh, you know, and um, yeah, and they get pretty beat up. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of like right in the name, like work pants, yeah, yeah. work boots. Yeah, yeah that's because I'm, I'm working. working. Yeah, I'm working. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Adam said that one of the episodes with those two brothers, right? With yeah. the loafers. Yeah, the guy was wearing like some Italian loafers. Yeah, and he's like, right? and the, the he's, name is right in the shoe. Yeah, they're, it's like loaf. They're loafing. <laughs> yeah. When you're doing construction, do you wear loafers or do you wear work boots? <laughs> It's so funny, Those man. Guys showed up to work I miss the first. Ace Man, man. Right? It was yeah. Like, we had so much fun with him. Yeah. 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 Well, we can always go on that cruise. Yeah. Yeah. No. We should go on that cruise with Ralph uh, Gambali and his wife. Yeah. Maria. No, that you have to. You know, it's it's leaving out of a port in California. Love those guys. I'd like to just go there just to hang out with them. They're fun. Right. Yes. Yeah. I, I, you know what? We if we want to go on a cruise with them, we can do that over here on the East Coast. Yeah. True. But, you know, for that matter, yeah. they can ride his bike over here and just come to our house so we don't have to hang travel out anywhere. With, <laughs> hang out with Gary Heftard and drink Mangria. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I'm just. And Loxamana. I, I can't the say lackeys. that I, I miss flying anywhere because I'm, I'm enjoying being home. Yeah, it's been cool to like actually be in one place for uh, a few weeks at a time. Yeah, right? no, we know what? We're getting our kitchen done, so I, I can't really complain. Damn straight. Um. So I saw something really fucking hysterical online that I'm really excited about. What is that? Um, <laughs> uh, there was the Comedy Central did a, a roast of Rob Lowe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw the commercial for that. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Rob Lowe, he, he's been around a long time, and I thought for sure that would be funny. And I was um, reading an article about what – who was doing the roasting. So like a lot of the usual suspects. Some of them. uh, Yeah. So there was the usual suspects. One of whom though was an unusual suspect and it was Ann Coulter. She is a right wing conservative commentator and she's always on the today show and um, spewing her garbage, which is basically, she's just a horrible person She's a horrible person. She's got horrendous, horrible views, and she's just one of those people that if she gets hit by a bus, you really don't care. So, um, 
I was wow. reading this article. She must be really bad. She's a horrible person. She really is. So she wrote so is this, a book. Is this like the opinion of like the, the general population or is this just like a few people don't like – most people don't – I like, think if anybody has common sense, they they know that she's um, evil. Okay. So, and well, based evil. upon what I'm about to read to you from this article about that, uh, now they haven't aired it yet on TV, but they did write this portion of what was said because all of the people who are there to roast the subject of the roast right. also get roasted first by right. all of the yeah, people. Yeah, we've seen these things like Comedy yeah. Central and it's always like, you know, Jeff Ross and Dana Carvey and you know, whoever. Dana like, Carvey. Not Dana Carvey. Um, who am I thinking of? Um, oh, wait. What? Uh, not on, Dana man. Carvey. Who's the other? Who was the one that uh, that was in this one, actually? I think he was there with Rob Lowe. I don't know who you're talking about, but anyway. Another Saturday Night Live caster. I don't know. And... Uh, Lisa Lampanelli is in a lot of them, right? She's always Sometimes really funny. She is, yeah. yeah, she's hysterical, by the way. I love yeah, her. Yeah, David Spade. David Spade. That's who I'm yeah. thinking of. He was okay. in this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. So it was very clear that everybody hates Ann Coulter, which is justified. But this is some of what the people. Is it bad that I don't even know who she is? I'm like I'm. I feel like I'm so out of touch with uh, with stuff like that because you know I'm 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 like living in this bubble of work. <laughs> like I'm just so involved with the uh, stuff that I do. I don't, first of all, I haven't watched T. I don't even remember the last time I really sat. You know and what? She's only on once in a while, and I'm sure it's right. because um, it's just she's just really a terrible. She's just the only you want political to change the stuff I can tell you about, or people that are involved in it. It's just like it seems like any time I do hear, like over here, the morning news when we're getting ready and whatever, it's always like some flashback of you know Hillary Clinton smashing Trump or Trump smashing Hillary Clinton. It's like all right. It's it's almost like to the same stuff over and over again that I, I kind of just tune out now, I think, recently, okay, well, the last couple months. You. So, <laughs> so the uh, British comedian Jimmy Carr said, Anne is one of the most repugnant, hateful, hatchet face bitches alive. <laughs> it's not too late to change, Anne. You could kill yourself. Oh, shit. <laughs> Love that. Wow. Yes. The conservative commentator, eager to promote her new book, In Trump We Trust, was one of nine celebrities invited to take pot shots at the star of the West Wing and St. Elmo's Fire. But it was Coulter who spent much of the evening in the hot seat, at one point being labeled a two-faced bitch and a transvestite whore. <laughs> Even Super Bowl hero Peyton Manning got in a few jabs announcing, as you all know, earlier this year, Ann Coulter won the Kentucky Derby. Oh, shit. <laughs> The event, hosted by Roastmaster Master David Spade, was taped at Sony Picture Studios in Culver City, California, and featured NSFW routines by Manning, singer Jewel, Karate Kid actor Ralph Macchio, comic Nikki Glaser, and Comedy Central star Jeff Ross. That's got to be rough, being Ralph Macchio. Like, the only thing, like... Yeah, like you're the Karate, karate Kid karate, Forever. Yeah. yeah, Karate Kid Forever, right? Yeah, I mean, like, really, can you think of... It was, of, like, 30 years ago. Was there any other movie that you could think of that he's been in? No, nope. I mean he's, he's got, the Karate Kid. That's, guess, it's justified. I guess. I guess. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Most joked about Lowe's failed TV projects and the infamous sex tapes he made with a 16-year-old girl in 1988. Yeah. Whatever the, happened with that? I know. At the time, though, I wished it was me. But oh shit! <laughs> because he was so pretty, he looked like my favorite girls. Right. But uh, many of the evening's best zingers were aimed at directly at Coulter. David Spade said, "Anne hopes the Republicans can hold on to the House so she can still haunt it." Peter Davidson, if you're here, Anne, who is scaring the crows away from our crops? Oh, no. <laughs> Jewel, as a feminist, I can't support everything that's been said tonight. But as someone who hates Ann Coulter, I'm delighted. Oh, shit. <laughs> Even Jewel got in. Uh-huh. Love it. Ralph Macchio, I respect you. You are, one of, you are the one female commentator who is not afraid to stand up to take a leak. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki Glazer, Anne, you are awful. The only person you'll ever make happy is the Mexican who digs your grave. Oh, good God. <laughs> Coulter sat wow. expressionless through much of the evening and drew audible boos during her seven minute set when she mentioned Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump. Wow. So earlier in the evening, she told Fox that she has never seen a celebrity roast and only agreed to appear on it to promote her book. Wow. So she didn't even Stupid. know what she was in for. Yes. She didn't know what she was in. Oh my god! She is. Yeah, like, like imagine if you were invited to like partake in a roast. You have to realize that you're going to get trashed mm -hmm. as well as the person who you're roasting. Right. 
Yeah. Right. So you would think she would at least kind of no, like. because she's a moron. Who is heading up her PR team? That's what I want to know. Like they let her do that. I don't know, that, but she's evil, and I'm so glad that they actually turned it into. Wow, someone over there her. needs to get fired, <laughs> right? No, that was a huge score. No, no, I'm saying like someone oh, on, her, on her PR. Like, how oh, do you let her go to that? Because they roast? secretly hate her too. Oh shit! <laughs> There's nothing likable about her. She's entirely repugnant and evil, and just a terrible, that's despicable like, that's person. That's like they need to be fired. Like the same PR person for Trump's wife that wrote her speech. <gasps> Right, like you know what they tried. They tried to like they they didn't fire anybody over that because they didn't want to make it look like somebody on their own team was trying right. to hurt her. Right. So they kind of like minimized it and made yeah. it like no, you know, she told me what her, the, the ideas she wanted to put into the speech, and I wrote it down, but I didn't check. So somebody right. took the fall. Yeah, it's all a bunch of spin. But you know, the bottom line is all these high profile people, be it celebrities or you know of whatever type, sports people or entertainment people, they have. A team of people. They have management. They have agents. They have PR people that book all these engagements and and, and you know, um, you know, appearances and things like that. You would think that if she went to that thing and get you know received the abuse that she got, That's awesome. and she thought she was just going to get some you know, yeah, she some promote PR her book. for her book. Meanwhile, she got slammed. Right? That's awesome. Somebody's got to lose their job. Everybody over that. hates her so fucking much. I'm sure like everybody was just like shh. shh Shh, don't tell her. Don't uh, tell maybe her, I know her. who she was if I saw her. I don't know. Is she like she? Well, that's the, why they said that she won the Kentucky Derby because oh, she's God. got a horse face. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right then. Yeah. Okay. Did you know? Would you you used to watch Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero? Yeah. Did you know that the no one Rose, please? Well, actually, you should just yeah that too. Yeah. So you know that like pretty much almost all of the people on there were much older than the teenagers that they were portraying. Right? Yeah. Right. Okay. They were like thirties. Well, I don't know about 30s, but... Definitely late 20s. Guess how old the one that played Andrea was. Oh, God. Are you going to tell me like 45? No. <laughs> she was 29 years old playing a 16-year-old. Wow. And, but the you know what's fucked up? She looked 29. Right. How the hell did she get cast on yeah, that show? Yeah, a few people on that show, they totally look oh, like way older God. than like teenagers, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's ridiculous. She did <laughs> 16 year old they would never pull that shit today like they they, they're so like with older women getting roles now you know what i mean there's like a lot of ageism going on there's plenty enough teens that are talented enough to get those roles you don't need to be hiring somebody like that damn um what else was i gonna oh i saw a picture of oh uh, ariana grande she's dating some guy i forget his name fuck she he was in one of her videos and he's a good-looking guy. He's like a model. And there was a picture of them. They just got tattoos, and they're showing them outside of some tattoo parlor or something. And this guy is wearing his basketball shorts, which are like those long, flowy shorts that look like a skirt on a dude. Right. He's wearing those. Socks, tube socks, and those fucking old man sandals. Oh, man. What's with the socks and sandals? I don't get that. I think it's actually become an acceptable thing now. Like just like the high waisted jeans. <sighs> yeah, I, I yeah I I can't get with uh, like a lot of the stuff that's going on. It's with, on like, purpose. The, I mean, like fashion. he slipped his yeah, foot into like, an old man's sandal. <laughs> it's like pulling your pants down down below your ass cheeks, and then walking with one hand on your pants and not separating your legs very far to I mean, hold them up. You know what? Just like everybody like, whose thumbs are going to be fucked up for future generations because you're busy using your smartphone. Yeah. Men's well, we're gonna, legs we're are going to evolve. To get, we're yes. we're going to have these monster thumbs. They're going to devolve. They're going to have like really think about like prehistoric man. They had shorter legs like apes. They had the big ape hands, like you know what I mean, like bigger thumb. <laughs> like we're devolving because of these fucking assholes wearing their pants beneath their asses, so they they can't walk properly and well, they can't run. If you look at like that whole overall image, it makes your legs look really short, teeny and your, tiny, and your torso look like really super long, deformed. Yeah, how like, is that sexy? Like check out Bieber. Right? Like, yes! He wears those fucking balloony pants like, can't touch this. Yeah. What the fuck? He's got the MC hammer, but they're, but they're tight. They're skinny jeans, oh, God. but like in the middle, they have yeah. the crotch down. Specially by you. sewn the low cr- crotch. The crotch are at the knees. What part the of that is The crotch and the jeans are literally at the knees. When I look at a nice pair, like a nice ass and jeans, it's because the ass is in the ass part of the jeans. How do you look at that <laughs> and not, say that's something sexy about that? It's not in the leg that? hole. <laughs> I don't get it. 
I don't, I don't fucking know. get. And you watch these assholes walking with their hand on their pants. I don't know. I, you I know said what? to somebody where once. I'm sorry to cut you off. I said to somebody. Actually, I'm not because you cut me off too. I said to somebody, "What do you do if somebody goes chasing after you? Like, how do you run?" And, and they're like, "You can't. <laughs> you can't. You can't run with your pants. Can't run. You can't run with your pants. Your belt around your thighs." Wow. Your, your belt is literally around your thighs. And ironically, a lot of the people that wear their pants like that need to be able to run. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh just, just say it. I don't know. Yeah. It's just an observation. Yeah. D- All right. So um, lots of good stuff going on. And um, what else we got? Anything in the news? Yes. Mariah Carey's sister was charged with prostitution. What? Yes. Wow. Yes, apparently she's not doing so well. Allison Carey. I guess Mimi's not uh, handing down any of the money to the... Nor uh, should she be. Nor should she be. Allison Carey, who is 55 years old, which is about a good... I think Mariah's about 46 or 47 right now. Yeah, Mariah looks good, though. She looks all right. I, I don't really think she's particularly pretty. No, but she looks good for her age. And she, I mean, obviously she's, you know, keeping in shape and stuff. So well, she's probably had that, a bunch of work, and, too. And whoever has that much money looks good for their age. Hmm. Um, so the sister was arrested after she um, solicited money in exchange for sex from an undercover police officer. Ah. Yeah, so I guess her, uh, she tried to deny that uh, she did that. I don't think that's going to go over well. Probably not, no. <sighs> so. <laughs> it's, that's pretty, like, cut and dry. Like, you know. How much? Okay, and there's the price, and what are you going to do for the money? And then okay. now you know that they like they are Snap from Long Island. Out. They're they're not from both of them are not f- from far from here, from right. where we are. Right. And I just when I think about how Mariah has changed so much, and she calls everybody darling, no. that makes me want to throw up. Mm. It really like think about what a pretentious bitch. Well, I mean, you Talks know, like she's, that. Uh, she's world traveled and lots of oh money. God. So I guess that, you know, you join the, uh, the elite club and that's how they talk. Maybe. It's just, I just like, I can't, I, I don't know. I just, I find her, her personality repulsive as well. Mm. Okay. She's just like, she's so full of herself. All right. Well, I just don't like it. I, you know, I, I guess, um, she doesn't seem like a nice person. She doesn't seem like a kind, nice person. She seems just entirely all about herself. I, I, I don't know her. <laughs> I don't know her either. I know what I see on TV, and it's like how is, there couldn't be a high a high um, volume of niceties if all they're showing is her being like. Wasn't there like a lot of controversy when she was like judging on um, on recently on the show? On yeah, on um, American Idol between yeah. her and and Nikki. Constant Nash. battling back and forth, right? Yeah, they didn't get along. Ah. Um, I have a um, a topic that a, a listener friend of ours had had brought up okay and i wanted to see what your opinion was on this as well we'll check it out so she uh michelle mertz and her husband curtis went to uh the redwood forest for a vacation in their what is it rv saw some pictures of it yeah they yeah. got an awesome uh fifth wheel a travel trailer yeah thing is insane yeah and they sent me some pictures of some really nice uh you know like woods and stuff they found like a lumber supply out there all types of hardwoods and and uh, yeah, I was I was pretty jealous. Okay. Actually. Yeah, me too. So they brought <laughs> no, their dog. I don't want to want more the woods or the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. They have a dog. It's a big dog. I don't I don't know what breed it is. Do you? Mm, it's a big dog. Looks no. like a lab. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like guess. a lab. Yeah. yeah. So what she said was that they were having a disagreement on whether or not they should bring the dog with us. She said, because they were, they took it on the trip, but they were going to some place. They were going to areas that didn't allow dogs. Plus there are elk and other situations that may not be great for accompanying pets. So now her husband was pouting and saying, whatever you want, I just don't want to argue. Um, so she, she basically was trying to figure out like what to do in that scenario. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, I, you, we, <laughs> we deal with that all the time. Yeah. You know, so many times we travel, God, probably a hundred times, um, you know, our dogs or at least Kilo, at least one of them, um, had come with us many, many times, yeah. countless times. He's not supposed to be in any of the places he went to. Oh, yeah. But he's also four pounds. Teeny, tiny, it's not So now in. you're talking about a big dog. You know, you like... You There's no sneaking in that No, dog. you can't sneak yeah. that dog in. Yeah. And really, I mean, if it's going to become uh, to the point to where the dog is going to, like, it really, like, um, kind of lower the, uh, the whole experience, you know, by having him there because it's, it's such a problem. I mean, if you don't make arrangements to have the dog with you, 
and you're just going to try to wing it, you could wind up getting all the way to where it is you want to go. And you and I have done this. Mm -hmm. Like we've been in Cali, we've been in many different places and we're like, Oh, let's go to universal today. Or like, let's go do something. Yeah. And like, then we get there and they're like wanding people and patting you down. And like, you know, normally like you'll take the four pound dog and stuff them in your pocketbook or your jacket or whatever, but you couldn't do that here. So now it's like, all right, now the stress begins. Right. And I can remember stressing out. I'm like, I don't want to stress out. I want to have a good time today. I don't want to have to deal with stress. And we had to deal with that many times because you decided I want to bring them along. And, yeah, and, and I, I knew from the start, not a good idea. Yeah. This is what's going to happen. And then we're going to be placed in a position to where like we're going to have to turn around and leave right. or whatever, right. which sometimes we did. Uh, well, for me, a lot of the time it was if I can't go in there with him or sneak him in, I don't want to go because I yeah. don't want to be without him. Right. All right. Well, what? That that was a different time now, right? So, but when we're also talking but about when you we're, have a, a we're young, talking a healthy... about them because that's not it's not a possibility for them to do right. that. They have anyway. a bigger dog, so right. So some places you just can't take your dog, right? And that's you know, right. So I was my opinion was that you have to decide what do you want to do more, go to that place or not leave the dog alone, right? And then I said, and so then, and when you end up going to that place, decide if, you know, if, if you want to uh, be with Curtis or not. <laughs> All right. Well, here's the solution. You go by yourself. You got the big travel trailer. You got air conditioning, that thing and everything else, right? So you drive the old trailer to wherever it is you're going to go. You leave it in the parking lot. You leave the, you know, the thing running or whatever and the AC on and you leave the dog in the, in the comfort of uh, the luxury. It's not going to be gone that long. See, now that's another thing because there, there are things that we do that might take eight, nine hours and I don't right. want to leave the dog alone that long. Right. Yeah. And like we're going to Orlando in January. Right. And I would absolutely 100% take Milo with us but if we're not. not for the fact that <laughs> right. the only reason we're not, because I know I can get him into that trade show, but we, I know I cannot get him into Disney or Universal. Yeah. And but, I don't want to leave him in a room. Yeah, but I don't even want to deal with that. I'm going there to, you know, we're going to go network. We're going there to do. There was no do, dealing with him when we went to DeWalt or Milwaukee. He was in a bag. He kept his trap shut the whole time. You didn't even know he was there. Right. Because we were in a different type of situation there at that Same place. thing as the trade show we're going to. He can be in his bag and he, I'm sure he won't say a peep. But if we're going to those amusement parks. He's going to have to stay in the room. Yeah, which That's we will. You know, we're day. doing too well. We're there. Yeah. It's a really long day. We'll be gone 12, 13 hours right. walking around, right? right? Whatever. And you don't want to have to worry about this. No. So I get where they're coming from. It is a tough decision. But, you know, yeah. sometimes you have to make a decision that maybe it's even better for the dog. Because yeah. if you are going to have the dog with you and you're going away for a week and one of the days you're going on an excursion and the dog can't come with you, now the dog is going to be locked in a hotel room or whatever. Right. So it's like... It's almost like sometimes you got to weigh it out and like, you know, there's been many times where we've gone places to where, you know, we have pet sitters or, you know, like dad or whoever yeah. will, you know, uh, someone in our family will come and take care of our animals and stuff because we just can't take them, right? It doesn't make sense to take yeah. them all the time. Do we have any friends in Orlando? Uh, probably. I don't know. Because that could let, work. Let me, let me think about if that. If somebody wanted to babysit him for the day, I would be so happy that I could take him with us. Mm. All right. Well, we'll have to look into that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would really, 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 really ease my mind because I would be really stressed out without, you know, wondering if he's okay and all that. Speaking of Orlando, the uh, the tech from Samsung, they just flew him in this morning. He called me. He came in from Orlando. He's going to meet me at the Fox building tomorrow morning just to give me a class on wow. how to operate this refrigerator because you, know, you need to be like a computer engineer to run this thing evidently. So. And not only that, though. You don't need to be because you just need to learn it. No, no, and you're no, going to no, learn no. it. Yeah, like I, I need a crash course because I'm going to talk gonna about it. I'm, about yeah, it, right. I'm talking about it. But what's Millions even, of people what's watching. What's really fucking cool is it's we're not just like trying to pump up the refrigerator. We're trying to tell you about our new refrigerator. Yeah, well, that's actually really cool too. <laughs> Samsung and Home Depot were really uh, very generous in that sense, and you know, obviously, they like what I'm doing for them. I've done a bunch of these things for Depot, and they're an awesome sponsor of mine. And I just love all the folks over there. But uh, this time around, they say, like, you know, hey, you're doing something in your kitchen, right? Like, you know, you're rebuilding the kitchen. And I've told them, you know, we're, we're filming a bunch of it. They've been part of some of it. Um, and I mentioned, yeah, we're going to be at the point to where we're going to start needing appliances now because we're basically finishing now. Oh, well, you know, we spoke to Samsung and uh, they wanted you to keep this thing when you're done with the segment in the city. And I'm like, wow, wow, that's 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 yeah. pretty nice. So that was I'm a, really excited. I can't that wait was a to generous, use it uh, yeah. and tell people about it. Like, because, you know, there's a lot of very cool features. Also, it's got the, the French doors. 
and the it's got two on the top, two on the bottom. The two on the bottom though, which is the freezer, but the bottom right section you can actually change from freezer to refrigerator or to thaw temperature. That's the flex zone. Yes, you can you change can... the whole zone to whatever right. you need. Right. So depending on how much freezer space, or if you need extra refrigerator space, you don't need as much freezer space. You can turn a, a, one of the four areas uh, into. A... That's very, very, very unique. Yeah, it's very Love different. I mean, that. everything about that thing is super high yeah. tech, right? It's like. It's there is, there is so much to for me to learn about this thing. Like yeah. between now and nine a.m. tomorrow morning, <laughs> like a lot. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm doing a crash course tonight. I'm going to meet with this guy that's flying in from Orlando tomorrow morning. We're supposed to meet at five a.m. tomorrow morning, but we actually backed it up a little bit, um, and we're going to spend like you know, I'm going to have like a whole class on how to talk about this thing. So that's that's pretty cool. You know. Um I, before I forget, because, you know, I have uh, memory loss, um, I've started watching some new shows on um, the A&E network because I've been, you know, I was watching 60 Days In. And so I was, there's a new second season of 60 Days In. Right. So I started watching that and it's good. And I already told you about that. But as I was scrolling through the A&E website to get to it, I saw some names of other TV shows that I had uh, never heard of. One of which is called Married at First Sight. And what it is, is they have this these four, um, I guess you call them experts. One of them is a clinical psychologist. Another one is a professional sexologist, you know, like whatever, you know, sex therapist. Right. Um, another one is a, a professional sociologist. And another one is a... Um, what does he do? Like uh, with a with the church, like uh, marriage counseling kind of guy. All right. So they they had canvassed for this for people who want to be want to get married and they want to be in a relationship and they have not been successful in finding love and, and what they're looking for. So they went through like a shit ton of applications and they found three pairs of people that they thought would be compatible on multiple levels. And what the the experiment was was to have them get married, like they they literally meet as their the the woman's coming down the aisle and they get married and that's when they see each other for the first time, and then they as they're getting married yeah they haven't met before they would meet right there wow and then they go on the um, a honeymoon for a week and then they move in together and they live together for a few weeks and at the end of five weeks. They meet back with the the specialists and they decide whether or not they want to stay together or get a divorce. And it's a really good show, actually. It's really good. It's um, it it I I watched a whole season in like a few days. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm here talking about it all the time. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, I didn't tell you about it though. No, but you've been. Telling I said me I'm, you're, I'm watching the show. It. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I didn't tell you what it was about. So yeah. now you know. Like a brief overview. I think that's all I got. I don't even think I did that. Okay. All right. Well, then I guess you did. So there's another Thanks. show on A and E called it's it's like um, part of Sixty Days In, but it's called um, Behind Bars. The um, what was it called? Something. Uh, it's about a, a correction officer's first year on the job while they're still like um, they're they're brand new. They are what are they called? Rookie, rookie, the rookies, the rookies. Their first year being corrections officers and what they go through being inside the jail from there. That's another really good show. Oh, that sounds like really actually interesting to see what those guys could do. That, that's is. a crazy place, right? It is. And you see all the crazy shit that goes on in there and how the inmates try to take advantage of them because they know that they're new and, and they try to get over. And so it's it's a really good show. I highly recommend it. If you like 60 Days In. I definitely want to check that out. If you like 60 Days In which uh, but or if you like those jail shows, you will like this show. Very it's cool. you, you get like you feel very like compelled to watch the next one because you want to see what happens to these people. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be great. I like Sixty Days In. That was actually a really cool show. Sixty Days In second season's even better. Actually, I'm really digging it. Really? Yeah. Even after finding out the stuff that you found out about some of the people on it. Yes, because even though the people, the stories that they told about who the people were that were participating in this thing right. were not exactly a hundred percent accurate or I don't know if I should say truthful or you know they made that one woman you know they called her like a 21 year cop or whatever veteran of the police department you know she wasn't she was a fucking store security officer um 
But these, what, what happened in the jail is what happened in the jail. Still the same. Like you can't, you know, you're not having people act in jail. You right. know, it's like it, it is what it is. And, you know, everybody knows that jail blows and that it's uh, it's got all kinds of crazy shit going on and fights and gang stuff and, and rape and drugs and all that kind of shit. So all yeah, of that. you can't make that stuff no, up. No. Right? And, it, you know, you know what happens. And right. this show highlights a lot of it. So it's, it's interesting to see, like, what goes on in there mm-hmm. to see like, the real deal. And to see that how how it's its own world, like, it's. It's not the same as on the outside. The, the, the rules on the inside are different between right. your relationships with other people and how you have to try to present yourself so that you don't get taken advantage of. And, and if you do this, then it means that to other people. And if you do something nice, then you know, this is what's going to happen to you. It's just it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff that you wouldn't realize unless you were in jail. And it's, it's very interesting. I am checking out both of them. Yeah. All right. OK. Well, we have to get up super duper early in the morning to get to the city for this Fox thing. You guys got to be sure to set your DVRs if you're not going to catch it because it's uh, 920 uh, Eastern. That would be 620 on the West Coast. So if you don't get a chance to watch it live, set your DVR. Or go to our website. I'm going to be posting it as yeah, I always do. Yeah, we put the do. link up. Yeah, we're going to. We I always put, put the, the whole video right. to your appearance as on well, the website. As well as all the links of products that I'll talk about and some additional stuff that's going on. Yeah. So uh, thanks for coming back every week, twice a week. Tell your friends about Hammer Nails Podcast. Don't forget about our Amazon banner at the top of our page. If you have listened to this whole podcast at this point, please hit pause, go to hammerandnailspodcast.com and drag that Amazon banner up to your bookmark bar. We really appreciate that. And thank you so much to you guys who have actually been using it because it really helps us out. We, we see what you're doing and we really appreciate it. We love you. See you guys tomorrow on Fox. Bye. Bye. Bye.